guys, are we well? Yeah. Okay, now, you seem like a lovely warm audience, you really do, so I feel sort of comfortable enough to open myself with a little bit of an insight into my personal life. Okay, it's a bit private. Um, you probably know what I'm going to say, but it's best I just come out and say it from the start. Um, I'm the sort of guy who, uh, who usually gets called Madam on the phone. <laughs> But it does have its upsides, having a really feminine voice, right? Because as a gay guy, it's really hard to find the love of your life. Because only 10% of the population is gay. So you've got a really small target market. But I managed to up my target market from 10% to 11% with this voice. Do you know how? <laughs> Blind, straight men. <laughs> really embarrassing getting called Madam on the phone, it happens all the time, um, and I've realised recently I'm really easily embarrassed, um, and I've found out why this is, I actually suffer from a bit of a syndrome that you might have heard of, um, it's known as acute Britishness. <laughs> so I'm really easily embarrassed and socially awkward pretty much all the time, and um, there's a couple of reasons for that I want to share with you tonight, and the first of those is my name, right, right back to the day I was born, I was branded with Britishness, it's so painfully plain and boring and British. And I can see you now trying to remember my name in your head. Thank you very much. Uh, I wish I had a cool name. I wish my name was like Angelina Jolie. <laughs> That's the name I want. Because when her parents gave her that name, they were saying something to her, you know? They were saying, we have faith in you. You're going to stand out. You're going to be a star. So what are my parents saying to me, ladies and gentlemen? And they gave me full name, Mark Stephen Daniels. <laughs> Uh, sort of same state agent to me, if anything. <laughs> and to prove to you just how boring this name is, I'm going to call this here Exhibit A. And here I have Exhibit B, which says number one Mark, number two Stephen, number three Daniel. These are the top three boys' names the year I was born. <laughs> Thank you, Mum and Dad. It ain't easy having a name like that in today's society because you've got to find usernames for things online and stuff, right? And I was not the first Mark Daniels to discover Twitter. So I have to be the sort of slightly more difficult to find Mark Daniels 55 <laughs> on Twitter. I sort of did the British thing, you know, 54, so I joined the Only Q. <laughs> um, on Grindr, I from Big Cop 24. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out more Mark Daniels is on Twitter than there are Big Cocks on Grindr. <laughs> Believe me, I've really looked. <laughs> Something else from my childhood that makes me really British, and maybe many other people in the room, is that we've been through the British education system, right? And that definitely has an impact. That's what I think makes us really indirect in the way we go about things as a people, right? And I'll prove it to you with this. Um, I've got a textbook question here from when I was at school. This is a genuine question when I was at school from a math textbook. See if you remember things like this when you were at school. Sally was making lunch for her friends. She baked an apple pie. If she has four friends, what angle will each slice have to be to make a fair share? Take a compass and a protractor and draw the apple pie with its slices. I don't know about you, that's a pretty fucking indoor way of asking you to draw a circle. <laughs> My credit's due, right, but things have changed, and they have. So my nephew lent me a physical textbook from school, and a modern-day textbook is completely different from modern-day society. The equivalent question uh, sounds a bit like this. It's completely different. Sally was making lunch for her friends. During a period that was not Lent, Ramadan, or the fasting period of any major world religion. should she add? <laughs> At least they're trying, you know. Um, but you sort of think, 
I sort of think it's, it shows how useless the stuff we learn at school is about that sort of thing. And I think that's a very British thing as well. We just don't, we don't question it, you know. If it's the dumb thing, we'll just get on with it regardless. It doesn't need to make a blind bit of sense. Why are we learning that at school? Probably because we've been learning it for decades and nobody ever thought to say, why, why are we learning that again? Because who here has used a compass since they left school? <laughs> who here has seen a compass since they left school? Right? Useless skill. I think most useful thing I learned at school was in my swimming lessons. Who has memory of being in swimming lessons? If you could swim, you sort of went to like the lifesavers class, you know, sort of advanced section. In a swimming pool, in your pajamas, <laughs> picking up a plastic brick from the bottom of the pool. Useful skill, useful skill. Doesn't come up in day-to-day -day life, really, does it? But I questioned it once, right? I said to my teacher, sir, why, why are we actually learning this? And he said, Mark, this could save your life one day. So, so how is that? And he went, well, imagine you're on a cruise ship. <laughs> okay, I'm not really destined for life on cruise ships. I'm from South East London. <laughs> this school once took me on a school trip to the Woolwich Ferry. <laughs> not to get on the Woolwich Ferry. We looked at the Woolwich Ferry <laughs> on the back of the town. I said, so I'm never going to get on a cruise ship. And he said, well, Mark, in your case, and I wish I'd been old enough to understand the subtext, I think you're destined to be a bit of a cabaret performer on a cruise ship. <laughs> Slapping in the homophobia from the age of 10. <laughs> Go British education system. Um, but how is that supposed to help me anyway, right? I'm in a cruise ship, this imaginary cruise ship, in the middle of the night, it crashes, I'm in the sea, and I think, well, I could swim to the shore. It's just this irresistible brick. <laughs> So I think we've got a few things that we do a bit odd in this country, and I think maybe we could turn and learn from a couple of other countries, right? And one country I think we could learn from is America. Do you have any Americans in? No, we would have had them in space um, I think we could learn from America, right? I've got a theory, and when I say I've got a theory, I mean I heard a scientist talk about a theory on the TV and it's not famous enough for anyone else to know, so I claim it's not. <laughs> Um, which is why Americans are so kind of, you know, they're kind of really like friendly and optimistic and happy and Brits are kind of, hmm. <laughs> and there's a reason, right? The reason is that most Americans are actually descendants of Brits, right, from hundreds of years ago, but they're descendants of a certain type of Brit. They're descendants of a Brit that heard about a brave new world of America and went, yeah, I'm going to go over and start a new life. They're descendants of those. We are the descendants of the people who heard about the brave new world of America <laughs> and went, oh, I don't know. <laughs> don't really know what to pack. <laughs> what if it rains? <laughs> that rings sort of scarily true, doesn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, guys, I'll leave you with this. This is what it's like when you're out and about in everyday life as a Brit, right? I was on the tube the other day um, and this guy, he walked right into me. He walked right into me, it was completely his fault. I was really angry. I was just building up the courage to do something really risque, you know, like, tut. <laughs> but uh, I couldn't bring myself to tut, so I'm really British, even though it was his fault, obviously. What did I say? I said, sorry. sorry. Of course I did, right? But when I got a closer look at the guy, I was actually really pleased I didn't tut, because um, it turns out this guy was blind. <laughs> but um, he was also pretty fit. <laughs> I just wanted to introduce myself. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. My name's Angelina. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great evening.